Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors today. Sorry for the technical snag, but we are here today with Dr. Pulrenu Chauhan, a leading endocrinology and diabetic consultant. Dr. Chauhan is a, uh, a, a, a section coordinator, Department of Endocrinology at the PD Hinduja Hospital and Research Center at Mahim in Mumbai, and head of the Department of Endocrinology at Hinduja Healthcare Surgical, uh, that's at CAR in Mumbai a DM in endocrinology and an MD in general medicine from the GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, where she also did her MBBS. Dr. Chauhan is a member of the Maharashtra University of Health Sciences Study Committee. She's a guide and teacher for postgraduate and various other students. She's also a published author in various Indian and international publications and has been a speaker at a variety of global and national conferences. We are delighted to have you here with us, Dr. Chauhan. You are in the hospital gear and uh, the various, uh, uh, is, you know, technical issues that come with it. But um, a, a few words from you on 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 um, diabetes and uh, issues concerning senior citizens, and then we'll get to the questions right away. Uh, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for the introduction that you've given me, and on this diabetes in the young and diabetes in the senior citizens are in the body and you know that for energy purposes we require all of this and this has to be normal so that you ensure a healthy and a relatively longer life we also know that longevity has increased and so also lots and lots of problems along with longevity most of who are diabetes or who have relatives who have diabetes are aware that high blood sugars cause complications which remain for life. And the complications invariably come up or are recognized after 10 to 15 years of diabetes. In our country, most of the times diabetes is recognized say, at the age of 45 to 50 nowadays. And if it goes unattended, the complications come up after the age of 60. So once you cross the line to be seniors, you not only have diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, heart disease, but many other complications, many other medications. And also there's a lot of change in the body metabolism. There's slowness. There is something the vision gets affected. Uh, lots of traffic, imbalance, falls. And also nowadays we know that Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, dementia also sets in. So diabetes in the seniors is a new chapter altogether different from when you started to be a diabetic. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, your voice level still needs to go up a bit. Is this okay now? Absolutely fine. Absolutely yeah, fine. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Ravindranath, Mr. Vedinathan, you know, your questions have been answered now. The audio levels have gone up. Uh, so we'll get to the questions right away. We have yeah. quite a few questions coming in. Yeah. And those of you who have questions, please put them in the Q&A tab. And I will ask them uh, to Dr. Chauhan. Uh, Dr. Chauhan, we have a question from an anonymous attendee who says uh, uh, his triglycerides are high. And what does one do for that? Also, what is omega-3 and I'm deficient? What am I supposed to do? Will you read out the questions or should I take it as it comes? I will read out the questions. Oh, okay. So this person has said, because there are questions coming in from Facebook also, so I'll ask this question once again. Okay. Uh, so we have a question from an anonymous attendee who says his triglycerides are higher and what does he do? And the other question is, what is omega-3? And if I'm deficient, what am I supposed to do? See, triglycerides are nothing but fats which are produced by the liver. And very often, uh, high sugars and triglycerides go hand in hand. I'm sure all of you have heard of cholesterol, but very often we don't look at triglycerides. But triglycerides is immediate fat release, and that causes fatty liver. It can accumulate in the heart, and it can create complications of diabetes, whether it's heart disease, stroke, or other major vessel uh, complications. So once the sugars are high, triglycerides start building up, they get deposited in the liver, and they get continuously released. 
those who have long standing diabetes and have no insulin in the body which invariably happens after many years they have triglycerides which slowly start going up and they create problems omega 3 fatty acids are supposed to be good fatty acids which are actually not really produced in the body in that many in that much of amount and we give omega 3 fatty acids which are easily uh, digestible fatty acids they get dispersed and utilized very easily and they are supposed to be far better or good fatty acids in the body as compared to triglycerides or cholesterol uh we have a question from raji mehta who says i am 65 years overweight lady since last 10 years my hb a1c has been in the range of 6 to 6.4 so the last two years i am on glycomet 500 twice a, twice a day uh my hb one ac is uh, 6.2 to 6.4 my question is what is the pre diabetic stage will it become diabetic definitely am i considered as a diabetic you are definitely see normal hp a1c in all individuals is less than 5.7 and yours is 6. Point something which is very very marginally elevated and we do call it pre diabetes actually not all patients with pre diabetes get converted to full fledged diabetics and this mainly depends on change of lifestyle regular monitoring of your blood sugars and by lifestyle i mean is mainly diet and exercise and maintaining your weight regular monitoring is a must so we generally ask patients to do hba1c in a pre diabetic stage at least every 6 monthly and to maintain it less than 6.5 at all times we have a question from sharad bhargav who says if one gets diabetes after 60 is it less serious as it takes 15 to 20 years to affect organs so if you are uh, if you know for a fact that you did not have diabetes before the age of 60 then it's relatively fine because most of the complications as you correctly said takes about 10 to 15 years to appear however 60 is still young according to me so you have a higher risk of developing macrovascular complications by macrovascular i mean a stroke or a heart disease or the vessels of the blood of the feet which gets blocked giving rise to diabetic foot ulcers and infections so there are two sets of complications one is microvascular where in the eye the kidneys and the nerves get affected that that would happen much earlier but at your age at 60 if you are not careful even after 5 to 10 years you can develop macrovascular complications so you have to be careful about it the other point which i want to really stress is that in diabetes there are usually no symptoms till the complications appear so then one would have 200 300 which are ir you know it's it's a story of all people in our country that meri sugar to 200 ke aas paas hi rehti hai mujhe kuch nahi hota hai but after 10 to 15 years that 200 is definitely going to create a problem so yes you can get complications even after you are 60 if you are not careful right uh, dr chauhan your voice levels are still a little low sorry it's okay is this okay i think it's moving you know when you move it kind of moves. ah probably yeah it's uh, okay now a bit better it was a bit better but now again it's kind of, uh, anyway let me let me ask you a question which was been uh, uh doc mr ravindranath who uh, was upset about the audio levels <laughs> so mr ravindranath mr ravindranath asks can you inform doctor can you ask doctor the safe range of blood sugar level for a senior citizen above 70 years also please inform me food at night is are oats good are oats good if so which brand is better so the first part of the question what would be safe levels of blood sugar generally after the age of 65 we want the fasting blood can you hear me now yes we can hear you ha so generally after the age of 65 a fasting blood sugar of up to 140 150 is fine and post lunch or post meal blood sugar of about 200 is fine so uh, let me just emphasize here that at this age we are not worried about high blood sugars as somebody already said that it takes 10 to 15 years to develop complications so when you are 70 plus we are more worried about low blood sugars and the complications rather than high blood sugar also hp a1c after the age of 65 Uh, is seven or seven point five is what we look at as safe HbA1c, and eight to eight point five after the age of seventy five years. Right. 
as far as the second question is concerned about oats uh, you know honestly any oats any preparation of oats are fine at this particular age in very young individuals we don't like those packaged uh, uh, oats we want fresh which is available with the banyas as we call them but quaker oats and all that we don't prefer but at your age any kind of oat preparation is fine right thank you doctor uh, we have a question from uh, from devendra gada who says if someone has diabetes then how many years months days after then can we see symptoms uh, uh, surfacing so generally for any complications of diabetes to occur it takes 10 to 15 years and you might not feel anything at all however there are certain complications like infection a diabetic foot infection or a lung infection patients whose blood sugars are not controlled they get, they are more likely to get infected in our country tb is very very common other fungal infections especially in women very common and urinary tract infections because of um, toilet facilities which are not easily available also elderly women especially because they are elderly they are post menopausal are more likely to get urinary infection and fungal infection in their private parts you can get lung infections which are more common so these kind of infections occur more commonly which can be picked up immediately and that is mainly because of poor sugar control but otherwise for the other complications which i mentioned it takes about 10 to 15 years right uh, thank you we have a question from vivid pereira who says can a type can a type 2 diabetic who took insulin shots for 3 months stop taking insulin once the blood sugar levels drop down within the normal absolutely in fact many many patients are on insulin very often only temporarily whether it's high blood sugar or surgery or maybe covid infection and then very gradually they can be put on oral tablets and the infection can, and the insulin can be tapered off and stopped thanks we have a question from uh, khare uh, mr khare who says i'm 74 years old 74 plus years old carrying second stage diabetes for more than 25 years my present creatinine is 1.6 hence my doctor is trying to put me on total insulin treatment what is your opinion with age the kidney function also reduces so very often elderly individuals especially after the age of 65 or 70 have sl slowly rising creatinine so we don't look at only creatinine we also look at other uh, factors with creatinine and the gfr as we call it which can be calculated or done at the level of the labs so if the gfr is reducing say it is 60 or 50 which has now become 30 then we are worried and at 1.6 of creatinine you don't have to be on insulin unless you are going for surgery there are many medications which are available which can be used in uh, with high creatinine as well and which are very safe right thank you we have a question from uh, suresh kamath who says i understand diabetes occurs due to malfunction malfunctioning of the pancreas can we reverse it with proper nutrition and exercise? Absolutely. It's a lifestyle disorder. So in the beginning itself, if you recognize that you're, except the type 1 diabetes who need insulin for life, type 2 diabetes can be easily controlled, though not cured only with lifestyle changes. And again, here, many people think that today my blood sugars are normal, HbA1c is 6, so I'm fine. Remember, diabetes and blood sugar goes up every minute. So if you don't check it regularly, say once in a month by your glucometer and HbA1c every three to six months, you won't even know when it starts creeping up. But yes, you can absolutely control with lifestyle changes. Thank you. We have a question from Dinesh Bhavsinka who says, please guide me on the problem. How to maintain serum creatinine level within range? My level fluctuates between 1.3 to 1.6. So uh, one is your sugar has to be controlled. The second thing which definitely contributes to increasing creatinine is blood pressure. And third is the protein intake in your diet. So these three things, if they are taken care of by regular uh, checking, then your creatinine will be maintained. Uh, doctor, this is from a person who says, I, work, I, I live in a small town and I work in a small town. I'm not able to meet a doctor because of my... Uh, 
very weird hours at work. How do I help myself given the fact that I do have some excessive blood sugar? Uh, He is sixty-two years old. Sorry, how old? Sixty-two. So he has to control his blood sugar like uh, anyone uh, less than sixty years old is concerned. So uh, you you need to buy a glucometer actually, sir. And uh, glucometer nowadays are extremely uh, sensitive in picking up and uh, checking the blood sugars. You buy it from a good company, and you can rely on. And maybe once in three four months, whenever you can get an access to the lab, you can check in the labs. But glucometers are good; they are almost uh, exact as the lab readings. And I think it's a good. It's not very expensive and uh, easily available. We have a question from KP Malik. Uh, so KP Malik says, uh, metformin it affects the kidneys as I read, as well as vitamin depletion. What is your advice? Are BGR thirty four Ayurvedic tablets are they good? I really don't know much about Ayurveda or any other alternative form of uh, medications. Some Ayurvedic preparations I know have uh, heavy metals. which damage the kidneys there are many ayurvedic medications which contain steroids which also damage the entire body and metabolism so uh, without really knowing what it contains one should not take ayurvedic medicines also uh, lifestyle modification is the only alternative to drug treatment and diabetes so uh, sorry what was the part of the question uh this question was uh Sorry, I have missed it myself. Uh, so it was about Ayurvedic medications. I Ayurvedic don't know, medication. but we generally medication? don't, uh, except for the naturopathic medications, say Sabgul or Trifada or something, where we know it doesn't damage the body or affect diabetes or metabolism. They can take that, but Ayurvedic generally we don't uh, advise. Right. All right. We have a question from Shantaram Ram Ram Durkar, who says I'm 75, type 2 diabetes since 13 years, survived COVID attack in June 2020. Uh, what care should I take? What care should I take now? Sugar and BP are under control. So you are at an age, sir, wherein if your blood sugars and blood pressure are normal, just do regular monitoring, checking, control your diet, walk about a bit. and if you are not on any medications just maintain a normal lifestyle that's all i think food and exercise are the two main cornerstones of diabetes management right thank you we have a question from jinendra jain who says i'm 69 years old i'm diabetic for 30 years i have pain in my foot i have the swelling in my foot since 3 to 4 years the swelling comes up in the night and gets okay in the mornings my creatinine level was 1.0 a month back Julia was eighteen. Sugar was ninety-seven. Fasting. So uh, at this particular age, uh, we get what is there are many factors which can cause swelling of the feet. One is if there is low proteins in the diet, low hemoglobin. Creatinine is not the contributor for this uh, swelling of the foot. Uh, then if you remain sitting or you leave your uh, feet dangling for a long time at this age, fluid tends to collect, and when you sleep, means when you go horizontal, it goes back. so that's why in the morning there is no swelling and as the day progresses the swelling up appears there are some medications certain bp tablets which cause swelling of the foot sometimes you might have we call it what is known as diabetic neuropathy or vasculopathy which occurs with age and worsens with age which can also cause some swelling uh, one is not really worried so much if it disappears with time especially in the morning but if the skin over your foot or feet become red and it starts paining then probably there is some skin infection and you need to see a doctor thank you we have a question from mr vedanathan who says i am 70 and on medicine imipride 1.5 mg before lunch and after lunch my hp a1c is 6.1 blood sugar is controlled but on certain days the blood sugar level goes up to 59 60 or 80 85 why does this happen it depends on the what you eat uh, mr vaidyanathan uh, i think at this particular age one is not particularly worried your hba1c is very well controlled and we don't recommend such strict 
uh, control at your age. HPA1C of 7 or 7.5 is really advocated because you are at a risk of developing hypoglycemia as well. And hypoglycemia is much more uh, dangerous at this age because it can precipitate a heart attack, convulsions, coma, comatose situation and all that. So once in a while, if the food intake is little different or you've taken something extra, sugar can go up. And also, as I told you, that sugar never remains stable. It keeps on going up and down, up and down. That's why we need to check it off. I'm not particularly worried if it goes up uh, off and on in this particular manner. Right, thank you. Uh, we have a question from, uh, from Narendra Shah. He says, I'm 69. What is the difference between type 1 and type 2? My diabetes is 320. What food intake should I take? I, we'll get to the food later. But basically, his question is, what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes generally occurs before the age of 18 years, though we do see a second peak in elderly individuals, but that's a very, very small number that get affected. But most of these children who have diabetes before the age of 18 or 20 years are type 1 diabetes. Uh, it occurs abruptly. Means one fine day they are okay. They have a few very specific symptoms and their sugars are very, very high. These are patients who require insulin to maintain the blood sugars. And if you don't give insulin, it can even cause serious complications and death. Type 2 diabetes is generally seen after the age of 30, 35 years. And they can very well control their blood sugars, first with lifestyle changes, maintaining their weight and medications. If a type 2 diabetes with time does not control his blood sugar and HbA1c continuously goes up, then the body insulin secretion dries up. And then these patients over time require insulin. But they don't have the dangers and the complications as a type 1 diabetic does have. Coming to your second question, if your blood sugar is more than 700, of course, besides controlling your diet and walking and all that, you need to... Uh, take better medications, different kind of newer medications are available. And if it still doesn't go down in a short while, then you need to take insulin to control it. Uh, doctor, we have a few questions which are coming on food. So I'll uh, perhaps address that. Uh, so one was uh, uh, Narendra Shah uh, asked, what food should I take? Then there are some people that know about wheat, maida, rice, what should one take? How does one manage oil. I know these, some questions are specific. So for that, one needs to speak to a doctor. But overall, you know, can you can you give an overall kind of guideline as to what kind of food one should take? Are those uh, new forms of uh, uh, ATA for diabetics? Are they are they good? You know, what should one should one have, have maida or not rice or not? So, you know, overall uh, uh, guidance, if you could give on uh, on food habits, that would be good. Uh, I often tell my patients that except for water, everything increases the blood sugar. And uh, whether it's proteins, fats, or carbohydrates, fat is the one which increases the blood sugar slowly, but it remains high for a longer time. And fortunately for us, you know, the Indian diet is the best diet in the world. Like the continental diet is also good. The Indian balanced diet, a vegetarian diet, is actually really balanced with, say, 60% of carbohydrates, about 20% or 30% of proteins, and 10 to 20% of fat. When it comes to oil, all oils are bad. So if you're going to have fried items made of olive oil, then it's a no-no. It's as bad as eating fried from any other oil. So the quantity of oil and ghee, nowadays, you know, there was a new fad about using ghee and ghee is good and it's blah, blah. But ghee, butter, cheese, mayo, everything is equally bad. Everything increases the fat and the carbohydrate metabolism and increases the blood sugar. So everything has to be in proportion and has to be balanced. Uh, as far as Indian sweets are concerned, all of us are fond of Indian sweets. And even a small, say, uh, one inch by one inch piece of mithai will increase the blood sugar to say 200 to 300. So it is not the size of the mithai. It is the caloric intake and the fat content of the mithai. It really shoots up. Very often patients ask us, should we take sugar in the tea? Sugar is a simple carbohydrate. Unfortunately, we have a lot of tea with milk and all that. But if the sugar 
if we take sugar in tea, it goes up for a short while and comes down immediately. The other things are more complex. They remain. Oh, what happened? Sorry, I think we've again lost your voice. I don't know what is happening now. It's okay. We can hear you now. Uh, can you see me? Because I can't. I can. We can see you. We can see you. Okay. So uh, I can't see you at all. Something <laughs> has gone wrong, but I guess it's okay. Uh, yeah. One second. Ah. So. Uh, I think diet is very, very important. Indian diet is good. Indian vegetarian diet is very good. And the content of fried things, sweets, homemade sweets also is bad. Very often patients ask us, but we don't eat anything from outside. But you have one farsan or mistan from home and that, that is equivalent to a meal of the whole day. So one really needs to decide what you eat. We don't say that don't eat. But suppose you have a function or it's Diwali, uh, you can plan your meals. You can have, you can go for the function, but a few days after the function or overeating, one really needs to diet and exercise a little more so that overall sugar gets controlled. Uh, doctor, we have a question that has come in. Uh, it says that if I do have excessive uh, sugar or I do cheat on food, will exercise with a good walk the following day and if you cheat once in a while, it's fine. You have to compensate. If you cheat, as I said, in a marriage or a birthday or an anniversary, the next couple of days you exercise and diet, then it's fine. But if you're going to cheat every day, no amount of exercise is going to compensate. We have a question from, uh, uh, from Chandrakant Velhal who asks, uh, can we take homeopathic treatment for high blood sugar? I have no idea about homeopathy. You know, we've lost your voice, but I know your answer that you have no idea for. No idea. No idea about homeopathy. All right. We have a question uh, from uh, Chandra Bhargav, who says, I'm 68 years old. I've been on Dicomet 500 SR as prescribed by you. I recently tested my sugar at a lab. My HB. A1C was 7.1 fasting and fasting was 136 and post fasting was 151. I do walk regularly and do yoga. Do I need to increase my medication? No, I'm quite happy with 7.1. And if you are taking just one glycomet, you probably don't need it. So if you could exercise and diet a little more strictly, then you can probably stop the medication and try. Okay. If you are, if your HbA1c is 7.1 with a single tablet of glycomet, you probably don't need it. You certainly don't need to increase the dose. For your age, 7.1 is fine. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from Devendra Gada who asks, can type 2 be converted to type 1? Yes, as I said, with time, if the sugars are extremely poorly controlled, then the body secretion of insulin from the pancreas, it dries off. Or uh, let's put it that way, that it goes totally insufficient or it becomes deficient. In that case, a type 2 becomes uh, type 1. But as I said, that if for some reason the sugars are not controlled, he will not become seriously ill like a type 1 patient who don't have... Uh, this is relative insulin deficiency. That was That is absolute insulin deficiency. But yes, to answer your question, you can become. Uh, doctor, this is a person who says that while I'm 65 and I do not have any diabetes or any issue like this, I find that my children have a lot of sugar and they don't listen and their sugar levels are fine. Is there something that I can advise them to ensure that they do not have diabetes in their advancing years? Some people do have sugar cravings. So I think your children are giving in to those sugar cravings. And if they're having only sugars, if they're lean, thin, fit, fine, if they exercise and diet, and if there is no family history of diabetes, then all they have to do is to check after the age of 35, at least annually. But uh, generally, this kind of a history, they don't necessarily convert to become a diabetic. Of course, sugar is bad. So if they understand and stop, it's the best thing. 
we have a question from a 53 year old it says i am taking glycomat gb1 fort and ziglim plus 2 ziglim m1 once a day my diabetes is 250 are the medicines good no uh, the medicines are good but obviously they are not controlling your blood sugar so you need to recheck with your doctor as to what is going wrong probably it's something to do with your uh, lifestyle with diet exercise or stress which is coming in the way of control or you just need to change you know very often patients who are poorly controlled the type 2 there in the medicine stop working because the insulin secretion stops high blood sugar as we call it it causes glucotoxicity which practically causes resistance of insulin action it doesn't cause deficiency so much it causes resistance and in the absence of insulin the medications don't work so you will have to question yourself that is your diet okay are you exercising is your weight okay for your height and then go back and find out why is it that the sugars are not controlled in such situations wherein there is insulin resistance and the action stops then it's best to take insulin for the for a short while control your blood sugar and see that the uh, the pancreas starts functioning normally uh mr kp malik has said his question on metformin affecting the kidneys and vitamin depletion has not been answered not sir yeah uh most often metformin doesn't do anything in patients who have renal failure for example if the creatinine is going up and uh, uh, the who and other diabetes associations and societies say that once the creatinine is more than 1.5 or 1.8 you stop metformin otherwise per se metformin doesn't cause uh, renal failure it's just that when you have renal failure it can cause problems and as far as vitamin d is concerned we know that vitamin d is now associated with pancreatic beta cell function and there are many studies available world over including in india wherein it says that if a patient has has a vitamin d deficiency and has a family history of diabetes then unless the deficiency is replaced these patients are more prone to develop insulin resistance and can get diabetes at an earlier age so just keeping vitamin d in normal levels or taking vitamin d regularly is very helpful for diabetes and many other medical conditions we have a question from ida shah who is 65 and she asks what is good sugar or jaggery both are equally bad so uh, no sugar no jaggery no honey uh there's a question from an anonymous attendee who says uh, who wants to know are sugar substitutes like uh, sugar free and stevia and diet coke or diet pepsi are these good uh, stevia and sugar free are okay as far as uh, the the soft drinks are concerned we don't advocate it at all and uh, but you can use stevia sugar free and many others which are easily available they don't harm okay uh um, a question uh, what does a normal non diabetic do when one has sugar cravings given to the sugar cravings so i didn't i didn't get i didn't given given to the cravings within limits with given to the cravings within limits uh, I, i i i think that kind of appropriately sums it up over here we have a few questions that have come in with specific queries like for instance uh, there's a mr ak maheshwari no connection to me who's given detailed stuff uh, uh, you know his blood sugar levels etc but we are not taking very specific queries uh, over here we would advise you to uh, uh, you know uh, write to the doctor at uh, the hinduja hospital or speak with your doctor and and take the specific advice uh, doctor are you available on uh, tele for a tele consult yes at- i am at mahim hinduja Yeah. at the mahim hinduja so what we will do is when on monday we will carry the uh, edited video and the uh, uh, takeaways from the session we will uh, put your uh, uh, hinduja hospital mahim coordinate so that we will uh, people can speak to you over there and um, thank you once again dr chauhan for being here and i i know there were some technical issues but i guess these happen once in a while 
uh, and thank you to everyone here to uh, for being here for this session and we will come back to you once again next saturday with uh, another session of uh, uh, health live at cnes at with health live at cnes today so please join us then thank you once again dr chauhan thank you i wish and i hope that uh, some of the queries have been answered and my only message to all of you is that don't take diabetes lightly at all it really creates problems but if you are well controlled you can lead a very very normal life thank you thank you so much thank you very much thank you